So out of the nine worst money blocking businesses to start in 2023, we're going to start with the number one pick, which is drop shipping. So why is drop shipping horrible to start? If you're doing it the wrong way, okay, so low profit margins. Most of you guys are just listening to some fake YouTubers that aren't really making any money. They're telling you to put up some Facebook ads or even worse, they're telling you to go look at the trending pages on TikTok. Look at what products are already trending and uh, making sales based off of the comments and everything. Download that video, re-upload it with your link to where a person can go to your Shopify store and then make a purchase and then you're just going to go viral and be successful. Successful. That stuff is garbage. Low profit margins. Facebook ads is going up. Plus, you don't get to build your brand. You're going to have inventory issues. The suppliers suck as well, and you depend on them, and a lot of people aren't even getting their freaking deliveries. Now, check this out. There's a way to do it. It's called local e-commerce. I have a course for that inside the Anti-Job University, so go to antijobuniversity.com and check that out. But the number two worst money blocking business to start in 2023 is Amazon FBA. This is kind of for the same reasons. Inventory, suppliers, all of that stuff. You can try all that white labeling crap that these people are trying to tell you to do. But guess what? You need to build your brand. You need to build an aura around your brand name and everything. And there's a lot of restrictions. You can't choose prices properly the way that you want to and everything with Amazon FBA. All right? So, guys, pay attention. So, the number three worst business model to start would be a marketing agency. Now, now. Don't trip out. You saw me. I have ProfitPositioningAgency.com. You think that that is a marketing agency. It's not. If you go there, you'll see I have a free option all the way up to a $97,000 option, which will soon be converted to a million dollar option per person. Okay. Why? Because I acquire partners. I don't acquire clients. So we're drop servicing any business that comes uh, 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 you know, to us. So out of our agency, we sell courses for local businesses. On top of that, if they need a little bit more hands-on type of stuff, we drop service them. Drop servicing is where we become the third party. We get to promote our brand, leveraging that business to do the fulfillment and use their ad budget and all of that extra stuff like that. So Starting a marketing agency is just acquiring another job for yourself. You getting a client is just another boss. Do not do that. If you're going to do marketing and everything like that, guys, acquire partners. Get equity in the businesses and all of that. Don't just get some retainer. That stuff sucks. Trust me, it's limiting your potential. You guys have the chance to influence the world with your marketing, with your SEO, with your Facebook and everything, but you will settle for less for some freaking retainer pay. Don't do it, okay? Number four, worst business to start in 2023 would be starting a YouTube channel. <gasps> what? Everybody else is telling you to start a YouTube channel, telling you to start a YouTube Shorts channel. You're going to get 100,000 subscribers overnight and all of that extra stuff. Okay, we want to apply the principles of leverage. YouTube channels are okay. They're good. You can make a lot of money with them. I'm not trying to tell you guys not to do that. What I'm trying to tell you is don't start a YouTube channel. If you can uh, purchase or acquire a YouTube channel or partner on an already existing monetized YouTube channel, then you can start receiving profit from day one. Guess what? Then you can leverage the content of other users. For example, guess what? Let's say that you acquired or purchased a credit-based YouTube channel. It's about teaching people credit. Now you can go on Instagram, find people that are not already monetized, make partnership agreements with them to repurpose their already made content, give them a time that they can go live and give them a limited, um, limited access to the channel and they can go live on the channel. They can grow the channel for you and you can do profit and revenue share for the ads and for the sales and affiliate and all of that stuff while they grow the channel and create all of the content. So that is the proper way to go about having a YouTube channel in 2023. No more starting from scratch. Game life. Okay, so the number five bad business to start right now would be a clothing line, guys. All right, so it's a lot of these print-on-demand uh, YouTube channels out here. There's a lot of these print-on-demand websites out here, but it's pretty much like the dropshipping one at the beginning. We were talking about the profit margins. 
on Facebook, usually, especially if you don't know how to create an irresistible offer, your profit margins are going to suck. And then if you go to TikTok um, or Instagram Reels, you are required to go viral in order to sell some uh, t-shirts. Some you understand what I'm saying? Enough to be able to change your life. All right. I'm not talking about some McDonald penny candy money. Okay. I'm talking about something that can turn your face up. You're not going to be able to do that if you are unable to build a good brand. All right. So there are ways to do that inside the anti-job university, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you already have an audience. OK, so number six. Now, I'm not trying to put limited beliefs on you guys. All right. These models that I'm talking about right now all work. You can make money with every last one of them. This list is about worse businesses to start, meaning levels of difficulties and levels of profit margin. OK, so that's what we're basing this off of. We're not basing it off of can it work because I know this guy that uh, made a lot of money with this. <laughs> yes, you know a guy that made a lot of money with this. But that does not mean you're going to make a lot of money with this. And that does not mean that that wasn't uh, uh, that that was profit that that guy made. They're not going to tell you all the metrics because then it wouldn't be anything special about their business model, will it? OK, so check this out. Selling ebooks. All right. So now. Ebooks, hardback paper, um, you know, audio books, all of that, guys, those things are awesome and they can bring you recurring income. So we on this channel, we talk about asset ownership. One of the things uh, that we include is ebooks and audiobooks. Those are assets, right? But if you can't go viral, if you don't have an, uh, a large audience, and if you don't know how to hack into algorithms of Audible and a lot of these other platforms, it's going to be extremely difficult, especially since some of you guys are shy. So let me tell you the best way to make money with an ebook. Give it away for free. What? What am I talking about? Inside the ebook have affiliate links, CPA offers, have mastermind upsells, have uh, uh, you know marketing and, and and all of that stuff offers. Have upsells inside the ebooks, but don't put a barrier to entry to your ebook. All right, give that away for free to the people that you want as partners, to the people that you want to leverage and make a lot of money with. That's the best way to sell ebooks, to make money with ebooks. But like putting them on platforms and just think you're going to become the best author overnight because you watched a couple YouTube channels, you're going to have a rude awakening. And some of you guys know that already. You already put up ebooks and you like, damn, I only made five dollars since the last year. The royalties are not that high, which is why you see channels where people are putting up 100 freaking ebooks a year. You see what I'm saying? Because they're just trying to throw stuff at the wall. All right. So next one on one coaching. So one-on-one -on -one coaching, man, this can be very effective for the person that you're coaching. But for you, it makes no sense time-wise. You understand what I'm saying? You're seeing this flurry, this rush of online personal trainers now because they're starting to realize, yo, this ain't making no sense. Instead of me teaching one person how to work their abs, why don't I create like a webinar type situation, invite 100 to 200 people, and okay, it's Wednesday. We all do ab day. Then tomorrow we all do freaking arm day. Then the day after that, we all do chest day all together. And you got a hundred plus people uh, paying you all at the same time versus one on one. You are putting a cap on yourself, just like having that job all over again when you do one on one coaching. You don't want to do one on one coaching. You don't want to do one on one strategy sessions anymore when a video can explain everything to people. You don't want to do any of that stuff. You want to leverage other people's time, networks, money, etc. OK, so one on one coaching, just throw that out the freaking window off the cliff that I live on. You understand what I'm saying? Get rid of one on one coaching. It does not make any sense for you. Oh, but it's high ticket. If I'm doing one on one coaching and giving them my time, they'll see how valuable I am. That's the crap. That's the crap I thought, too. But no matter what, they're still going to try to lowball you, most people, if you have not built your brand and reputation. So if you guys want to charge high ticket, first build your brand and your reputation for being a help me. 
You understand what I'm saying? If you want to become the greatest salesperson, first be the greatest servant and serve people in the mass. When Christ was here, he spoke openly in the synagogues. When Christ was here, he was in the wilderness and in the fields speaking to thousands at once. You understand? He healed people in flurries. He didn't just sit there and talk one on one with people. He knew he, in order to make a big impact, he needed to touch the masses. You understand what I'm saying? So you guys need to do that as well. You can do that in the form of courses. You can do that in the form of masterminds, seminars, webinars, whatever it is. All right. You can even do group coaching. Anything is better. Even group coaching. I don't care if it's just 12 people in a group. Group coaching is better than one on one. You need to leverage. Leverage. OK. All right. So the number eight worst, 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 worst business to do <laughs> or to start in 2023 is actually one that will teach you some crazy skills for when you do start your own business. And that would be MLM and network marketing. I almost hate those as much as I hate a job. You understand what I'm saying? Like <laughs> freaking MLM. All right. So the business model actually was created by Christ. He was the first one. He said, go out into the world and make disciples of every nation. And when those disciples did, they went and they preached. And then other disciples decided to follow them, gave their life. And then they went and created more disciples. So the first MLM was actually created by Christ. So it's nothing new under the sun. But the reason why I don't like this business model for today's is because the, the, the reward for the people that are spreading the message or uh, is is not the same. I don't like network marketing companies or MLM companies that don't have a very helpful product. All right? If your business model is just based off of making money from recruiting people, then that's the reason why everybody thinks it sucks. That's the reason why everybody thinks MLM is a scam because y'all only talk about the recruiting part. But I found out that MCA I don't know if y'all still remember them, but they had the freaking um, uh, uh, tow truck uh, service, the roadside assistance uh, service attached to their business. I'm like, why, why aren't people making money with this part? So when I had a person come to me and they was like, yo, how do I make money with this MCA stuff? I'm like, I don't like MLMs. But, and they, I said, do they have anything service based with this? And they say, oh yeah, they have the roadside assistance. I'm like, oh snap. Then I showed that person how to rank on the first page of Google for roadside assistance in Atlanta. And they did that within a couple of days and they were getting calls for roadside assistance and making money with that MLM that way versus going and sitting there and recruiting people, a million people all day. So one thing that I do like about it, it is teaches you, it teaches you to be able to influence. It teaches you to be able to uh, recruit people. And when you, even when you start any other type of business, you're going to have to become a leader or hire a leader, leader that is good at recruiting and creating a movement. So that's one thing good I can say about that. But other than that, like, dude, you need the product, man. You need the product. Now, the number nine business that sucks, the number nine business that you should not start in 2023 is a Fiverr business. Do not start a Fiverr gig business. Now, there's a couple reasons. So you can make a lot of money on Fiverr. Especially with the invention of ChatGPT and all of these gigs, a lot of people are like, yo, shoot, I get these gigs and you know what I'm saying? And people are going to be ordering and then I can just throw in their requests into ChatGPT and all of that. That stuff ain't going to last, first of all. And I'm not trying to be pessimistic. I'm a very optimistic person. But the problem is this. Everybody is going to be using the same prompts. This stuff is going to crash. On top of that, you're not able to build your brand. You're not able to, you're, taught, you're being tossed scraps. You're being tossed people that are looking for deals and specials, low ballers, cheap people, tire kickers, and all of that extra stuff. So Fiverr is not good for building your brand. It's good for getting a couple dollars, but it's not good if you're actually legitimately trying to create a mature, serious brand, guys. It's time we grow up. My audience usually are past the age of 25 at least. You shouldn't be sitting here trying to create a Fiverr gig if you're past the age of freaking 30, okay? You need to be building an actual business. So Fiverr keeps you in a little kid space, all right? It doesn't allow you to make money like the big boys, okay? Now, 
Some people are creating Fiverr agencies, and that's the only way I would go about doing it, where you have uh, multiple accounts set up, let the workers create their own accounts and everything, and then they put the gigs on there, and they do the fulfillment when the requests come in using your tools. So you provide the tools. You're like, well, why wouldn't they just um, you know, do it themselves and all of that stuff? Because you're going to provide the tools. So you go and get the edit, video editing software for them so they don't have to pay for it. And you're just going to be hiring people from different countries where the cost of living is super cheap. So the money would be good for them, right? So you, you, you get like 10, 20 of them. They got all their own accounts and you pay them on a performance basis. All right. So every time a gig comes in, they get a cut or whatever. You control all of the accounts. You understand? So that's the only way it would make sense. Create a fiber agency, not a fiber business. But those are the nine worst freaking businesses. These are money blocking businesses because you can be so much greater by creating your own assets. Remember, on this channel, this is Anti-Job University where we teach asset ownership so that you can one day be wealthy enough to own a ship instead of being so broke you can only afford a ticket ownership. Bars. Subscribe.